I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's get to some of the reads here. Um. All right. I uh, Iraq slash Mando scene. All right. Hi, Bill. First, I'd like to say that I'm glad I finally decided to check out your podcast a couple months ago. Oh, thank you for doing that. It's been my go-to podcast ever since and has gotten me through lots of long nights at work. I'll try to keep this sh- next part short, as I'm sure you're sick of hearing this already. But your performance in season two of The Mandalorian was nothing short of amazing. I n- I'll never get sick of that. As a comedian, to have anybody compliment my acting, it's fucking amazing. Um, I really felt the pain of Mayfeld during the table scene because I served as infantry in the Iraq war during 2006. And needless to say, those were some interesting times. Jesus Christ. I can't imagine going out on patrol and every time you take a step, you're thinking, am I going to lose my leg? Uh, Right before we deployed to Iraq, my platoon got a new platoon leader. LT, whatever that means. And this guy was a piece of work. He was all about God and country to the point that if George W. asked him to beat his pregnant wife to death, the only question from him would be if he could use his bare hands or use a crowbar. Jesus Christ. During the deployment, our fearless leader decided to disobey an order to stay off a road that was deemed too dangerous to travel on. Needless to say, this action resulted in the meaningless death of one of my friends during an IED explosion. Of course, the piece of cock slime LT survived. Well, did he get court-martialed? Or did you guys not say anything? Ever since that day, and even up until now, I dream of just being able to waste that piece of shit. And I could just read that feeling in Mayfeld's face during the table scene. Wow, dude. I mean, if I knew this story, I would have channeled that. Um. I was just thinking how much I hated going to summer school. That was my motivation. (laughs) Kidding. Sorry. I have to do something like this up. This is a fucking heavy email here. Uh, My hat's off to you for nailing that scene. And believe me when I say that you deserve more than an Emmy for that performance. Wow. I wish you and the family. I swear to God, people, I didn't write this. I, I wish you and all the family the best. I wish you and the family all the best. And I look forward to your future podcast and to hopefully see more of your performances in The Mandalorian in the future. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Very happy that you got back safe from being over there in Iraq. And, um, yeah, man, I can't imagine all of that. All of that. I I just can't fucking imagine just going out, going, okay, I'm on patrol. Here we go. Every single fucking day, what that would do to you. Um, unbelievable why the fuck would he go down that road he was on some John Wayne shit not realizing it wasn't a movie I have so many questions about that if you want to write back what the fuck did this jerk off say after he got a guy killed what a fucking uh, there has been guys like that I remember uh I remember said Douglas MacArthur was saying that they used to call him old blood and guts, and they were they were all like his guts are blood, right? Wasn't that in a movie or something like that? That was allegedly taken from actual soldiers' accountabil- uh, accounts. Anyways, I don't know. Fuck. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, Basquiat Art World. Hi, Bill. I'm a longtime listener who is currently trying to establish himself in the art world. Your comments. On the cunt in the documentary, Price of Everything, could not have been more on point. Bam! Look at that. Every once in a while, I am right. As it is the most disgusting and shallow cunts that rule the art market. Similarly to you, my introduction to the art world began with uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Hope I said that right. And I began interpreting his paintings in my own way. If you or the lovely Nia like his work, I strongly encourage you to check out uh, Cy Twombly, or is it Tombly, or is it Wombly? I never understand which one I'm supposed to make silent. I bet the W silent. I'll say Tombly. C Y is his first name. T W O M B L Y is the second one. Or Frederick. Oh boy, this is a Danish last name. My apologies to Frederick here. Uh, it's the 
capital N, and then that letter where the A and the E look like Siamese twins, B-I-E-R, and then the O with the line through it, which I remember is the empty set from my math days, or basically a line through saying you can't do it, and the last letter is D, Danish guy. Uh, Best, thank you. P.S. If you have some space on your walls, feel free to check out my stuff. Uh, you know, I give this guy a shout out at Victor V I C T O R W G R A U V at V I C T O R Victor W G R A U. Check out his shit. All right, all right. Um, Self induced E D from jerking it too much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Self-induced ED from jerking it too much. Oh, what, from watching like porn or something? Hey, Bill Buzzkill. I'm a 22-year-old guy whose dick doesn't work. Now it is. And you can, you can, you can come back. Come on, you can make a comeback. Uh, to keep things short. Oh, no pun intended. Uh, I've been single for a good chunk of my life. It wasn't for lack of trying. I'm just not very good with the ladies. This, in turn, led me to jerking off to satiate my more primal desires. I've been jerking it since I was 14, about eight years, and never saw any problem with it. Flash forward to about a year ago, I met the most beautiful girl, and we hit it off right away. She and I started dating soon after, and I've been dating, and I've been dating for about a year now. The sex is great, but I've started to notice I don't have much sensitivity below the belt anymore. I did some research, and I, pro- and I apparently gave myself... ED from jerking it too much. Well, I thought that means your dick doesn't go up. The easiest solution is to stop, but after eight years of jerking it, it's kind of like asking a dog to stop licking its nuts. I want to stop because I want to be a better boyfriend for my girl, and I want her to know that I can get rid of this, but I've tried multiple times and have failed each time. Do you have any surefire fire ways to quit vices you were addicted to? I'd love to hear them. Uh, hope you and your family are doing well in these unusual times. I wish I got to see you when you came to Texas, but it, it but it was but was in university at the time. Maybe next time. Thanks for all the laughs and go fuck yourself. Uh, yeah, you know what I would do? Just go talk to a uh, a therapist. He'll get you right out of that. He or she, whoever you go to, will get you right the fuck out of that. That's not a big deal, and that's so so common. Um. I went through a period, I watched so much porn that the only way I could bust a nut was through jerking off. So then I just had to not do it for a couple of weeks and then then I was fine again with my girlfriend at the time. So that, that happens. That's why you got to watch out for porno, dude. That shit is like, you know, and then also like you just start going down these fucking rabbit holes. Like everybody, like, I remember back in the day, back in the VHS days of porno, right? You get a fucking porno tape and there was always something in there where you're like, oh my God, that is, that is amazing. Like, that's what I'm jerking off to. And then there'd be something on the tape like, oh my God, that's too far. That's disgusting. If you kept the tape long enough and watched it long enough, then that thing that used to get you off didn't get you off. And then you had to go to the next fucking level. So um, I think there's going to be a bunch of fucking studies that are going to become way more mainstream about how bad porno is not to mention the people that are in it i don't want to take away anybody's livelihood but like you know there's been documentaries about what has happened to people you know both male and female what happened to them as kids that makes them go into that industry so the whole thing is just uh it's it's just not something good i'm just assuming that you're jerking off to fucking porn but um uh i would you know what i would do <clears throat> I would openly discuss it with your your girlfriend and just tell her 100% and just say, listen, I need to get help because I love you and I want to I want to get through this and just get it all out on the table. Now that it's all out on the table, you know, women women fucking love helping the guy out that they're with. They're really great when it comes to that shit. You just got to tell them what's going on. What they hate is when you fucking get all moody and because you're holding your shit in. Just tell her what's up. Go get a therapist fucking work it out i would literally tell her listen i'm trying to stop jerking off i can't i i need help there's nothing wrong with that and you're not the only person that's had that fucking problem so you'll you'll be fine all right girlfriend turned stalker 
You'll be fine. Just get help. Reach out to the people around you. Okay. Girlfriend turned stalker. Hi, Bill. My ex-girlfriend has a personality disorder and ran out of her meds while in another country during COVID. Borders were closed. Uh, it was a small town in Peru, and she should... Sorry, dude. I'm, I'm, I got I to gotta reread this because uh, I've been in this situation long long time ago all right my girlfriend has a personality disorder and ran out of her meds while in another country during covid borders were closed it was a small oh my god it was a small town in peru and she couldn't get access to what she needed to keep her stable to feel better she's been abusing street drugs oh no and drugs she could get from the local vegetarian like ketamine the fuck is that a common animal tranquilizer oh veterinarian I'm an idiot. I'm like, vegetarian? What the fuck? Do vegetarians have drugs? <laughs> Sorry, people. Veterinarian. Like ketamine. Common animal tranquilizer. Long story short, after she got back to the States, she began using other drugs, and I ended the relationship. She wants to still be together, to put it mildly. Since then, I have gotten at least 20 calls a day from her, I've tried several different strategies. I've tried to be her friend. That doesn't work with stalkers. I tried to say if she works on herself, we can reassess things in a year. That was a mistake. Yeah, you're giving her hope. I tried to say, don't ever call me again, and I want nothing to do with you. I blocked her number. That works. And she gets an app and calls me from proxy numbers with area codes from where she knows I lived. Dude, you have to stop answering your phone unless it's somebody you recognize. Trying to uh, insinuate herself back into my life. I think you mean insert herself back into her life. I block a number and she has another in two minutes. It is infinite. At this point, why don't you change your number? At this point, I'm absolutely ghosting her and she still calls at least 10 times a day on block numbers, which are impossible to block at this point based on my Google search wisdom. I'm at an impasse. I want to be compassionate for this human being. Dude, this is above your pay grade. This person needs professional health, but I don't want it to affect my daughter. Have you ever had a person like this in your life? What would you do? This is what I would do. I would get a new phone number. Uh, This is tough, dude. I would get professional help because if you get a new phone number, does that mean that she then will show up to your house? Does she know where you live? Um, If you have the funds, which I know is difficult during these times, I would move and then i would get a new fucking phone number if you can pull off both of those um in the meantime i just wouldn't answer my phone unless it comes in as something that you recognize and if it's important enough somebody will leave a message um um, i don't i would talk to a cop i would talk to people that know way more than some jerk off doing a podcast what you do because at least this doesn't seem like she's done anything violent but that's what i would be worried about for you and especially your daughter. So um, I don't know. With my situation, I just I just had to change my number and do all of that shit. I'm not going to get into that stuff. Uh, that's scary shit. All right, Ser- Sergio Leone movies. Dear Billy the Squid. <laughs> Is that because squids are red? Are you just saying I'm ugly? I don't even know. Um, anyway, Billy the Squid, I got to wrap this up soon here. Uh, dear Billy the Squid, did you know that Once Upon a Time in the West was a big influence on Breaking Bad? No, I did not. Vince Gilligan and the other writers were huge fans of it. You can see the influence and all the wide shots out in the desert. This, there is even a reference to the squeaky windmill in one episode when Mike collects money in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's so cool. Sergio Leone only directed seven movies. He's best known for the Dollars Trilogy with Clint Eastwood, but I would also recommend A Fistful of Dynamite, a.k.a. Duck You Sucker with Rod Steiger and James Coburn. I'm all over that. I'm watching that tonight. His last film was Once Upon a Time in America. I've seen that with Robert De Niro, James Wood, Joe Pesci, and Jennifer Connelly in her first role. He spent over 10 years trying to get it made and turned down an offer to direct The Godfather so he could make it. It's about an old Jewish New York gangster looking back with regret on his criminal youth. If you watch it, make sure you get the 251-minute extended director's cut 
which Martin Scorsese helped to restore. Wow, okay. I know it's long, but it has an intermission built in so you could watch it over two nights. It might be on iTunes. I saw it on Blu-ray, but I don't think you have a player. The 139-minute cut that the originally came out butchered the film. Yeah, because I didn't want to say it. I didn't enjoy that film. Didn't even make sense and got bad reviews, so make sure you don't watch that version. Okay, cool. Uh, It's only years later when the longer version came out that it became appreciated as a masterpiece. There is also a 229-minute one, but the 251 version is the closest to his true vision. It's tragic, horrifying, and masterfully directed with the great and uh, and Nino Morricone score. Uh, There are a lot of great classic films that aren't screaming anywhere and are only available on DVD or Blu-ray, so it might be a bit harder to find obscure stuff on YouTube. I bet the Criterion channel has it. Anyways, thanks and go fuck yourself. Hey, thanks for the recommendation. That's great. All right, last thing here. Overrated, underrated. Marrying a gamer. Hey there, old Billy Goats Gruff. Uh, Your comment on the 111 podcast inspired me to write in about this. I love that my wife and I share gaming as a hobby. I know people say you should have separate interests, but getting to spend an hour or two a day every day gaming with my wife is a fantastic experience. I got to tell you something. That sounds fun as hell. Um, I'd have a lot of fun playing video games with my wife, but we, I don't know if we have the time. Uh, we're in our 30s, have no kids or plan to have kids. I had a vasectomy and she had a bilateral I don't know what the fuck that is. AKA her fallopian tubes removed. All right. Well, I'd say you solve that problem. Uh, we have the money and time to devote to a hobby that brings us closer together. The biggest arguments we have are when she can't follow my fucking directions when we're traveling the map on map on a, on a quest. Best to you and Nia and your kids. Well, there you go. That sounds, you guys sound like a fun couple. Well, enjoy your video games. Um, all right. Overbaked birthday cake tip. Aloha, Billy Bolo head. Hawaiian pigeon word for bald head. Oh, cool. Aloha, Billy Bolo head. Okay. I used to do gigs in Hawaii before this bullshit happened. I'll listen for that. Hey, you fucking uh, mahala, you bolo head. Is that what you say? Uh, I was listening to your podcast on January 21st, 2021. um, In regard to your overbaking your daughter's birthday cake. Yeah, what I should have done when they said it was like, you know, whatever, 30 to 35 minutes. I should have come in there at 25 is what I should have done and checked it, but I didn't. I was fighting off a cold. All right. I am a professional baker and pastry cook from Hawaii with 13 years experience. Oh, please give me your sage advice. If you've ever accidentally overbaked a cake in the future, you can always cut the cake in half horizontally with a serrated bread knife and apply and soak simple syrup on the tops of each to moisten it before you ice it. No way. You can watch video tutorials on how to do it. If you really enjoy baking, I highly recommend the book, The Art of French Pastry. I'm in. Anyway, mahalo. Mahala? Is that how you say it? Mahala. Or is it mahalo? Mahala. Get low, get low. Mahalo. Uh, for the laughs, and I can't wait for next season of F is for Family. Aloha to you and your family. Ah, oh, wasn't that nice of you? Susie, the, uh, the, the pastry chef. I'm going to check that out. Who would have thought? Simple syrup. All right. Emotional boyfriend. Or am I a bitch? I love when the ladies write in. Dear Billy Bagpipes. Oh, I love the bagpipes. I know a lot of people hate them. I love the bagpipes. Um, I don't like how they get treated like a kazoo. Uh, or is a bagpipe just a difficult kazoo? Um, I've been with my boyfriend for two years now, and it's going pretty good. (laughs) I don't know how you talk, so maybe that's just how you talk, but that's kind of funny. If you're with somebody for two years and it's going pretty good, don't you want it to be going great? I think if it was going to go great, it would have been going great by now. Um, Anyways, maybe just how you talk. Yeah, it's going pretty good. Uh, we We have the same hobbies, humor, goals, communication. Wait, an interest. The problem is, however, is our emotional communication, meaning he's a complete Nancy boy that makes me some sort of a G.I. Jane, I guess. 
Oh, and that makes me some sort of a G.I. Jane, I guess. Although I don't know you personally, I feel we communicate similarly. Uh, I talk a lot of shit, say fuck you casually, tell it like I see it. Oh, Jesus. No matter somebody's feelings. Whenever somebody says I say how it is, I always think like, all right, that means you're you're being an asshole. I tell it how it is. That's how racists like to say that. Uh, All right, I know what you're saying, though. Okay, I tell it like it is, no matter someone's feelings. Uh, Was taught crying is a signal for weakness. He cries all the time, constantly over over explains his thought, is happy-go-lucky even at 6 a.m., and is the type to wake me up whispering how beautiful I am. I have to choke back my laughter when that last one happens. Jesus Christ. Okay, I I love him dearly, but the majority... Oh, so you actually, it's going great, but you're so walled off emotionally. Earlier you said it's going pretty good. All right, I'm starting to understand you. Um, I love him dearly, but the majority of our fights stems from my attitude, in quotes. Not taking any responsibility for that, okay? My attitude. And it becomes unbearable for us both. Uh, I personally like my coldness because I feel... It's made me a stronger woman and has led me not to victimize myself. Um, I would be a liar if I didn't admit that I would like to tap into my emotional side a bit more. I've even shown him clips of you and Nia talking, saying, see, she doesn't get mad at him for... Wait, I've even shown him clips of you and Nia talking, saying, see, she doesn't get mad at him for having an attitude. And he replies with, yeah, well, he's actually funny. I'm not a seasoned comedian, and my tone isn't paired with the silly Boston accent, so I'm shit out of luck. Well, I would think the fact that you say Nancy boy, you probably got some good English accent going on. Uh, Sometimes I feel like I should go and find someone who understands my tones better, and therefore I wouldn't have to try anymore. Exactly. Sometimes you get sick and you don't want to fucking, you get sick of it, you don't want to be challenged. But then again, I've dated guys more similar to me, and it was boring not having the challenge of seeing someone so different. Have you ever had this this same dilemma? And do you have any advice on either being more soft or at least delivering your harsh words in a charming way? Compliments, compliments, compliments. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, I've been where you're at. I'm a little further down your road. Um, listen. Um, I think you love this guy. You're not going to leave this guy. And... He's just, you know, when you're in a really good relationship, the other person is going to challenge you. So I think that the fact that he wakes up and tells you how beautiful you are, the fact that you're laughing, I get it because you're like, we talk about, I got morning breath, my hair's all over the place, and you want to laugh. I think wanting to laugh in moments like that, speaking personally, is part of your childhood, your fucked up childhood that made you the person that you are. And I've said the exact same thing. If I didn't have the childhood that I had, I don't think I would be able to, you know, handle the bullshit on the job that I picked, which is just a job. I put, this is the job I picked. It's a fucking job. You show up on time, you do your fucking job, you get paid, you say thank you and you leave. That's what it is. Anything else is just a fucking, it's, it's, it's bullshit. So being the way you are can really help you. Yeah, when you go out into the world, because it is a cold place. But the thing is, is when you come home, you got to shut that off. Because I remember way back in the day when the cellar was the cellar and the table was the table, um, my wife could tell when I went to the cellar and when I didn't. I'd come home and I was so on busting balls mode I come home and I and I needed to leave that at the door. So what you need to do is you need to you need to come his way. All right. So I would work on coming his way and then talk to him about fucking crying at the drop of the hat because you don't need that either. I mean that's not really reassuring as a woman that you know if some guy comes through the front fucking door he's at least going to fucking grab some sort of blunt object and give it a shot. You don't want him screaming louder than you. 
But I, w- I would say that you're with this person. This person is going to make you a better person um, if your life works out the way mine did. And um, I love my wife, and she's funny as fucking hell and can bust chops with the best of them. But she always lets me know when I go too far, and then I legit feel bad. So I don't know if you're there yet. I mean, it took me, I mean, oh, my God. From, like, fucking my teenage years to being about 35 before anybody telling me what they needed from me emotionally didn't immediately gross me out or make me have to fight back laughing. I mean, I used to have this thing when when people would cry talking to me. Like, I... I would burst out laughing. I would, I still to this day, I, I watch movies and I laugh in the wrong parts. And that's just part of, I don't know, whatever the fuck happened to me. So uh, I think you got a great guy and I think you know you got a great guy. Um, so I would come his way, but he needs to cry less. All right, I can say that without even knowing him. All right, okay. But you also have to accept him for who he is, all right? If he's going to fucking cry, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what he does for a living. I don't know. All right. 